So PJ, thanks for bringing your 356 down. That's a gorgeous example. Um, so we're looking at an A. Yep. Yeah. Obviously, the yep. pre-A's have a little bend in the windscreen, don't they, here? Yep. yep. Um, so this is an A, and it's got a lot of patina. <laughs> it has some, yeah, for sure. Uh, not necessarily all the good stuff, but there's some there. So. It is good stuff. What, what's not good about it? Like it's got the dents, it's got the dings, it's got the stone chips. Yeah, what more could you want from a patinated car, really? <laughs> very right? true, man, very true. Not original <laughs> paint, though, but not really a problem. Part of the car's story, I guess. Yeah, and also it means you don't have to be as precious about it, I guess, as having not, an original car. Yeah, not at all. We had, um, all. we had a friend of yours and a friend of mine in the other day, Sai. Yeah. And Sai's car, the brown um, 72 T, sepia, as he yeah. quickly pointed out, um, that car's got a lot of original paint to yeah, it. Yes, lovely car. And so um, uh, he's got to be a little bit more precious about it, whereas I guess you don't have to be as precious with this? No, nah, man, I don't really have any worries about it at all. First day I got it home, my... Uh, my youngest ran a hot wheel down the whole side of it. So. <laughs> Did he? Yeah, she, oh, right, okay. she, 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 uh, yeah, and they use it as a slide as well. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, so the family get involved with it using yeah, as a, yeah, man. Yeah, as well, a it's play climbing thing. frame. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, as it should, right? <laughs> cool, cool. So it's a left-hand drive car, so it's obviously not a UK car. Drive. Where did it come from? So it's an American vehicle, so Max Hoffman import, but after that, I don't really know where it went to. Like, so what got, was that birth? First Max bit? Hoffman. Max Hoffman. Yeah, okay. New York. So it was built on the 11th of September. Yeah. So if you're American, it was 9-11. Mm -hmm. for, which is yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. Um, 57. It's yeah. one of the last, I mean, even though it's got like teardrop rear lights, yes. it is actually a T1. Right. So it's a crossover model. So mm -hmm. there were only 60 vehicles after this before it went fully T1, uh, yeah. T2. So yeah, it's an interesting little vehicle. Uh, it's got some history of California. Yeah. So there's a sticker that's on the wound down window, so we can't see it, but it was a Volkswagen uh, body shop yeah. that obviously worked on it at some point that was in California. And then through the 356 registry, I tracked it down to uh, North Carolina as well. Right, okay. So, so it's no been about. I, yeah, no idea why. Now it's here in the UK, obviously, so. Nice, so did you bring it over from, from the US or I, was it already I, here? I did not. Um, okay. It was at a warehouse in Dover mm -hmm. and uh, I was, me and my wife, now wife, were looking for a 356 after selling on a couple of other projects. And um, I, I literally pointed it out to us. I was like, this is the most boring 356 you've ever seen in your life on this eBay ad. Mm -hmm. It was like on his driveway and it's like, it just looks so dull. Oh, yeah. I was like, okay, well, let's go see it to learn more, like, experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, when he opened up the warehouse and this was sat there, it was kind of a bit of a love at first sight thing. Do you know what I mean? Um, but I still passed on the car. Did you? <laughs> yeah, I did. Oh, really? I so did. What, what made you pass on it if you fell in love with it? <sighs> it's just, it was... It was and it was, on, it was on eBay you sort of advertised? eBay, yeah. yeah. And I'd had a friend that had gone to see it as well when he, he was interested in it, but it was at a higher price. Yeah. And so he passed on it as well. It just, it needed more than I wanted. I'd just finished a really long six year Volkswagen project. Yeah, so you wanted a break, and I guess. I that. wanted something I could just get straight into and drive. I didn't want yeah. any, any hassle. And um, so I decided that this was gonna be too much. So what was it about the car that was gonna make it too much? How much did it need or what did it need? So, I mean, it's, it's an ongoing project, man. Yeah. Like, it never stops. Yeah. But, uh, it's so it wasn't the driver then? It was it was sold as a driver, right? But I never test drove it. But okay. I didn't really believe the guy. You know, the oil stank of fuel, and it didn't like everything was crunchy and nasty. And he never started it. He never showed me it starting. He never showed any videos of it running or anything. So I was like, I don't really believe what he says. So, yeah. <laughs> so I kind of never really bought it as a as a running driver. It was always the idea was that it wasn't. It was a project, and so I passed on it because mm -hmm. I, like, I don't want another project. And then um, I was, I was um, on the drive back and he rang me and he dropped the price by a good figure. And so I spoke, again, I was with my wife at the time, we were speaking, he said, oh, it sounds too good. Rang up Simon, had a word with Simon as well. And he was like, well, if they can drop the price and they can do this, then yeah, maybe it's worth going for. So, mm. so I did. And uh, yeah, I guess sometimes you buy a car knowing it's a project and then it becomes even more of one. So, <laughs> so okay, well, the obvious next question is, so what have you had to do to it since you've it's had it back? New motor, rebuilt gearbox, everything suspension-wise has been right. redone, new brakes, wheels. Yeah. So it was running um, like C 
brakes, mm -hmm. like nine, 912 brakes. Yeah. And I always wanted to be on wide five because that's to me like it suits the 356. Yeah. That was just the vision I had. So swapped over to CSP discs all round, which were cheaper than a single drum from Porsche. So yeah. it made sense mm -hmm. to do that. Um, and it's a good upgrade. Yeah, I mean, like out of everything on the car, they've been the most reliable, thankfully. So, yeah. so um, tell me more about the engine. What what did you have to do to the engine? Then? So, so the motor is a new motor. Sorry, it's a new engine. Yeah. So it wasn't. So they, they, it did come with an engine, but it was non matching numbers. Okay. And it was just a bog standard. Um, whereas this is slightly uprated, uh, sixteen eighty, nice eighty five mil big bore kit, twin Webers, uh, external oil filter etc it is clean so when you say it's a new engine what do you mean by that well no it's an original 356 motor yeah so it's a late motor mm -hmm. um i just rebuilt mm -hmm. and then slightly hot rodded and uh that's what we got nice so, so you're yeah. running a slightly different can uh yeah i'm not very technical I'll admit <laughs> that's fine that. um i have everything written down on a spec sheet sure, but sure. yes it is okay uh, i wouldn't be able to say which one no sure sure that's the kind of thing my no brain just i was listening remember. to the idol though it sounded like slightly lumpier than a than a than what i would have thought i mean when it when i just restarted it now it wasn't <laughs> it wasn't doing its best but yeah, yeah. Uh, and then it's got a four tip a bath exhaust yeah from, that's a really cool thing that yeah it's nice it did ha i was running a sebring for a while uh-huh and I just found that it ran a lot better on this than it did the Sebring. The Sebring was really loud and fun because it shot flames. Nice. But, um, but this is just, it's just, everything's a lot smoother. So do you think it was just missing that back pressure that you get with yeah, this? Yeah, it was, I That's think it. so, yeah. I yeah. mean, I got warned about it when I switched it over. Like, yeah. because, you know, it's not going to be as sweet. I was like, oh, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, again, cool. going back to the car being a bit of a lemon when I bought it, if you look here, there is fire damage. Oh so, yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. So, you know, there was all these things and it's had, um, it's had an accident at the front end and obviously you can see it's absolutely yeah. chock full of filler on the corners. Brilliant. Uh, do you know what? <laughs> I, I love that PJ because most people would come in and they'd be like, oh, whatever you do, don't, don't show the fire damage. Don't talk about the crash, but it's part of the car's history and it's what I would call an honest car. Really. I, I think with this vehicle, like That's I'd normal, gone yeah. from like hundred percent original paint vehicles to this yeah. and it's like well i couldn't afford to get into a 100 percent original paint 356 yeah or a restored one mm. and sometimes you have to settle for something and you have to try mm. and find the potential but this is so much more interesting you know a fully I, restored I car you're like it's been fully restored there's nothing much more to say whereas here you know the car <laughs> talks to you you go oh what's that what's the story behind that what's yeah. the story behind the fire yeah. damage do you know the stories between the fire damage and the crash well, no, I'm saying, wow, see, again, there's no, not much history with the vehicle. Okay. I was told that this vehicle was picked up. It had been a relatively daily driven vehicle. It was at the side of the road with the bumper hanging off mm. after its accident. Mm -hmm. The guy decided he'd had enough or whatever. Um, fire damage, I'm assuming that's just come out like someone tuning a carb or something, mm. but... Um, there's lots of different stories. Um, again, I was told picked up at the side of the road, then went into part of a collection where it was going to get restored, mm. didn't get restored. The person then sold off a load of stuff from the collection. This got picked up in a bulk deal and then eventually shipped to the UK. That's just what I was told. I have no idea if it's fact, yeah. but you have so to go with it. there was uh, some kind of automotive archaeology about it as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'd, like I said, with the whole California thing, like the sticker has been on there for ages and I've always, I think it's this side, and I've always ignored it because I was like, uh, whatever, I didn't, I've got to go all the way up. There you go. Oh yeah. And I kind of ignored it. And then I was like, oh, it has an address. So <laughs> I looked up the address and oh, yeah. it doesn't exist there anymore. And if it, there is a company that does, but it's slightly changed the name and I think they only deal in Mazdas now. So whether or not it's the same business, I do not know. Interesting. But, yeah. So, um, New motor, then rebuilt gearbox, PRS okay. did that. Nice. And that happened right in the middle of lockdown. Yeah. So the car went away. It was just about to be finished and come back to me. And then I didn't see it for ages, which was really painful. Uh, so um, what did the gearbox need in the end? It just, it was completely rebuilt. Really? Like, yeah, the teeth. So was it just unmanageable, just didn't work at all? Or? Well, again, the car wasn't a runner. Yeah. So, okay. you know, when you're in there, everything was crunchy, nasty. Right. Uh, and when they opened it up and they showed me photos, it was just teeth and metal and yeah. it was nasty. Dirty oil, probably. This, this car is not 
a car that's had a nice life necessarily. Do you know what I mean? It's this is a vehicle that someone kept on the road for as little money as possible, mm. and there is evidence of that throughout it. And I've been yeah. having to dig through all this to get it to where it is. Sure. Like um, I had a breakdown not so long ago, and after investigating it, the um, the throttle. Uh, the arm for the throttle mm -hmm. was two bits welded together, but welded together using the end of a screwdriver to oh. hold them in place. Jesus, right? So okay. Who's done this? <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's proper MacGyvered, I guess. Yeah, yeah. man. But yeah, since right so so since getting it, since getting it on the road, first drive of it mm. was like winter. It was wet. It was rainy, oh. and I had to take it out. It was dark yeah, as yeah. well. I was like, yeah. now I've got to drive it. I've got to drive it. I've never been so disappointed. <laughs> it was horrible. Oh no. It was horrible. So um, baptism of fire, that being your first drive, geez. Just the car was really, like the engine was good, gearbox was good, mm. but everything else was terrible. So just running gear wise? Suspension, yeah. everything, everything was shocking. Mm. Like I'd gone from, the, I sold the 912 to get into this and everyone mm -hmm. was like, probably gonna be disappointed. Nah, 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 I won't be, I love it. It's like somewhere between a Beetle and a 912. That's what people describe it as. Mm. And when I got in it, I was like, I've made a huge mistake. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. But, but you then, kept the faith, though, because you decided to, to, to carry on working on going. it until you got there. So, you know, that's when kind of me and Jack became such good friends. As this was coming down. I was shooting it. We did the anti-roll bar, shocks, everything. Went through the whole car to get it to the point where it is today. And, you know, it is a rolling rest, though. There's never been a day when this hasn't. You know, it does, this doesn't get taken apart and taken off the road. This mm. gets fixed as we're going, because mm. I have to. I mm. want to drive it, I want to enjoy it. Mm. But with that comes potential breakdowns and it's a learning curve, do you know what it's I mean? It's all part of the journey, all part of the fun, really. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we did the, me and Jack did the Rally of the Midnight Sun, which was organized by a load of Volkswagen guys. So really what is fun. that, tell me about that. So that was a couple of days kind of tour, Goodwood, uh -huh. Brooklands, few different places in between, scavenger hunts and stuff. It was really fun. Old speed beetles and stuff. Nice. And this had two breakdowns on that trip. I and did it was it. like, all right, let's keep so going. So it's lucky you had Jack with you. I don't know where I'd be without Jack, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. I really don't. He's Fair enough. Yeah, Jack's a really good guy. He does some of my work as well. Like, I yeah. certainly can't fault him. He's very, very meticulous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He loves Fantastic. it. Fantastic. So, um, and have you upgraded the suspension at all on the car? Yeah, um, so the front, it's got new anti, like sports anti-roll bar. Okay. So that made a massive, massive difference. Steering box made a massive difference as well. Yeah. That was absolutely shagged. Mm. But now, uh, again, PRS supplied me with a new correct one, and that's much, much nicer than it was. Nice. Um, but everything about it is, it drives really good. Yeah. Drives really good. Still some stuff to learn. Um, and I've had to adapt to my driving style and my way that I start and run a vehicle mm. to, to kind of suit it slightly, so. Sure, well, all cars have their own idiosyncrasies yeah. and starting procedures. Yeah, exactly. Even when, uh, even when it's the same car from the same model and even yeah. the same year, yeah, yeah, they yeah, all have yeah. different quirks. Oh. Um, and the wheels are great, it's sitting really, really nicely. Thank you. So See. what wheels are we running here? So those are the original, is it KPZ? Is it mm -hmm. Crown, Crown Prince, I say? Um, they're just the four and a halves. Nice. Um, a guy from the VW scene got me those, which was really kind. And then Simon provided me with a spare. So nice. okay. <laughs> the spare one kicking around. So Cool, cool. Yeah, and yeah. Are, there, are there spaces in there? Is that what yes. I'm seeing here? Yeah, 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 so those are like the Carrera spaces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they look really unnatural. Um, no, I think they're really cool. I quite like time. it. It's quite open. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't, um, it almost looks like it's floating. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's really cool. Well, I guess logically, it's still the same kind of surface area contact points I guess but yeah 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 I always get nervous about these wheels because it's not like you can it's not like they're hub centric not hub centric but it's not like they're they're centric if you see what I mean mm -hmm. they don't locate before you put the nuts no, in no, no. so it's always quite a thing to make sure that you've got it really nicely evened mm -hmm. out when you're mm -hmm. talking them up and everything yeah but no very cool yeah okay and um let's have a little look inside yeah go for it sorry about the, the tape is just because it's quite a slippery wheel and I'm only operating with Two fingers and a thumb right now. To be now, honest so. with you, with this car, everything you could do to it looked gnarly anyway. So <laughs> I don't think it's too far yeah, off. I appreciate it. So there's it, something man. about, personally, I prefer the A's. You know, like the, I find the pre-A's like, I mean, they are nice. They have their place. But I, I, I really love the simplicity of the A dash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's a much purer design, which is often not the case. Usually mm -hmm. things are purer the older they are and they get more complicated later down the line. Sure, sure. But um, no, I, I, love the, I love the A dash. 
So you can it's see lovely. that's the T1 dash. That's the whole weird crossover thing with mm. this car. Mm. So, yeah. No, that's cool. And um, what wheel are you running there? Uh, that's a works wheel from um, Carmen Connection. Mm -hmm. So I, I had the massive, massive one. It was a real pain. Mm. It looks lovely, but I wanted a smaller one. Like, I think it's like, is it for the same you've got up there? Mm -hmm. And um, I couldn't get one for, for under, like, that you could buy a Volkswagen for cheaper than you could buy that steering wheel, do you know really? what I mean? So yeah. I ended up buying a reproduction kind of hot rod wheel, but nice. it's like a works wheel that they used to use on like, um, like 550s and stuff. No, that's uh, a nice wheel. Thanks, man. I appreciate really nice. it. And then you've got um, a nice little Hoyer clock there, is that right? Yeah, uh, my, my uh, wife and kids got me that for yeah, that's uh, really cool. fa so Father's Day, I think it was, or a birthday. It's time. And though. then Simon made the, um, Simon Medlicott made the little bracket. So oh, yeah. That's cool. Nice. And let's have a look at that. It looks like there's a... It's like a hound's tooth. Yeah, it's like a hound's tooth to it. That's very cool. So Simon made that. Yes, yeah, I made that. I that's think with his buddy... Whose name has escaped me, unfortunately. But. Okay, cool. I had no idea that Sai made titbits like that. That yeah, was cool. I don't know if he does it anymore. They're going to tell me off for calling it a titbit now. But. <laughs> <laughs> he did it for a while. And it was, uh, I was lucky enough to get one. Oh, I love the I love the leather dash here. The the the, the thick grain. So that's. So uh, what's the story there? That's what it came with, man. Yeah. Yeah, it's like cheap kind of. I don't. I haven't seen enough <laughs> to, to compare. But um, we I matched. Think it suits it, really. Thanks, man. I, I always wanted silver with red. Yeah. Like, that was my goal, was to find, like, a, a flat silver car with, like, yeah. a nice burnt-out red interior. And then I got white and black. So, <laughs> not Dude, sure. I think it's really cool. It's really nice. I think the high contrast between the white and the black is always going to work really nicely. Thank you. And I just like the, I really like the thick grain of that. It's Same thing cool, with the door cards. Yeah, so we ended really up nice. matching the seats that we've trimmed oh. to the kind of thick vinyl. So. Mm. Um, yeah, the seats look fantastic. So what are those? Is there a bucket seat? So did these come with the car when you got no, it? No, no, it had the huge the kind of like, not the bench seat, but the Armature. early, yeah, the big, yeah. big boys. They're so heavy. Yeah. Whereas these weigh nothing. Um, nice. I still want to adjust them slightly. Um, they're a little bit too, I'm a little bit too sat upright. Yeah. And because of the type of fabric we've used, um, there's very little movement. So you're, you're in, you're stuck, do you mm. know what I mean? Which is great. Which is what you want. Yeah, really. but at the same time, if your angle's not correct and you're mm. trying to adjust. And what about just putting a, a, a few little packers or razors just at the front, just that's, to scoop up? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what we're gonna okay, do, cool. I think. Um, yeah, yeah. But, and uh, I see you're running some really cool harnesses. Those are made by Anasis, by yeah, the way. Yeah, yeah. So I had those in my split window Beetle. Nice. And when I sold the car, I was like, you can't have the seat belts. So I kept the belts. Mm. Yeah, so the, the kind of next evolution of it was to put like a little a little roll cage in and stuff. But yeah, yeah. Whether I do or don't, I don't know. But no, that's cool. Yeah. Also, I'd like to do the carpets. Those are a bit grim. Um, I don't know. I quite like them, to be honest with you. Yeah, I mean, I like the cocoa mats, but the carpets are a bit... Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I see what you mean. It's just a bit... It's a bit naff. The thing is, it's a delicate balance, isn't it? Because if you over-restore the interior when the outside looks mm. the way that it does, you kind of want to have that balance. Yeah. It's a bit like, it's exactly the same as size car. You know, size interior, I think, suits the outside of the car mm -hmm. as well. Um, no, that's really cool. So tell me, how do you use the car? Is it, um, is it a weekend car? Do you use it for barnstorming? Do you track days? Do you do any hill climbs? So, yeah, it's you said done, you did rallies. So it's done the sheer hill climb. Uh, did that last year. Nice. Um, it wasn't. It, it still had a few a few gremlins, and I'd literally come back from California on my honeymoon the mm -hmm. night before. Mm -hmm. So I was so jet lagged, and I'd never done anything like that. So my adrenaline would go up, and then afterwards I'd be like, oh, okay. And then after a couple of times, I was just exhausted. So. I enjoyed it while I could, and then I got to the point where I was like, I just need to go home. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I snuck out early and went home, which is a shame, but okay, I was fair so enough. tired. Yeah, it's, it's been around Goodwood. Um, yeah, you've had it around Goodwood? Yeah. How was yeah. it around Goodwood? It behaved. It's yeah. a good circuit, that. It was yeah. fast, free-flowing, a few little elevation changes that can catch you out on the back. It was so much narrower than I thought. Uh. I thought it, like, going around, I mean, you watch it, and, you know, I've done a marathon around it as well, and then when I was actually on it with a car, I was like, this is really narrow. It's almost like just well, like a running marathon. Uh, I did it on skates. Oh, so, yeah, okay. I was, like I was like 19. Um, 
But cool. um, yeah, it was all right. I completed it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so it was really, really tight. So maximum respect for anyone that actually nice. honed it. And so when, when you had it on track at Goodwood, was that, so that would have been a track day, I guess? No, it was more of a parade. Okay, um, cool. We kind of got in there while we could, but the speeds got up to, we were doing about 80. Right yeah, now, yeah. So it was where I wanted to be with it at the time because it was still very much a work in progress. Yeah. And uh, what anyways. kind of other cars were you on there with? Simon. Yeah. <laughs> so Simon's 912. Okay. Um, some Carmen Gears, Old Speed Beatles nice. and stuff. Because so that's the thing. Cars. I think the, the issue nowadays is that a lot of the track days, you have such a modern metal there oh. on a regular basis. And actually yeah. going in an old car, it's just a bit of a pain. Yeah, I would Just people to flying past you. That, that's why that, that was the genesis of this blue car. I just got fed up of being overtaken by water cool cars every five seconds every time we were in a straight. Yeah, man. And I wanted something that would, that would actually perform, but yeah. I didn't want something water cooled at that time. No, fair. Um, but yeah, so that's the only thing that would intimidate me about. But it's fantastic you got it out on track and with yeah. cars of the same kind of horsepower. So you were all having a laugh together. Yeah, we had a great time. It was so cool. Like split window beetles and stuff. Really? Yeah, proper okay. old speed ones there as well. A that's crasser. really cool. Kind of stuff. That's really nice. So yeah. the family get involved with the car as well? Yeah, yeah. My wife's now got a, she's got a 964. Mm. Um, so yeah, everyone's kind of involved in it. I do the school run in this occasionally. Yeah. Which is fun, you know, the kids have got a little cushion and then they've got the harnesses on and stuff and nice. you know, I can't see over the over the edge for over yeah. the side. But I try to get the family as involved as possible wherever mm. I can. Um so yeah. Um I've also well, got a couple of buses and stuff as well, so they like that. And that's cool. Yeah, because you also have a nine six four, right? Sorry? You also have a nine six four. That's my wife's. That's your wife's. Yeah, oh sorry, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the okay. white one. Cool. Not yeah. supposed to be matching. That's all we didn't. Coincidence. So, yeah, it's embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> so. That's cool. And I love the fact that the car has a sunroof. Yeah. You know, cool. a lot of people always look for non-sunroof cars, but sunroofs are brilliant. I mean, on a sunny, warm day, sky above you, it's fantastic. It, it's not a race car. It's a hot rod. Mm. And I mean, I, like I said, I come from the Volkswagen scene. If you had a rag top or a, like a sunroof, that was always a positive. Yeah. So when I found one that did have a genuine sunroof, it was like why wouldn't you <laughs> like, oh, yeah. um and by the time i'd kind of haggled the price down a bit it ended up being almost like free so mm. yeah happy it is a genuine one as well like it goes through to the back and stuff so brilliant yeah and it's nice especially in an interior that's black actually it lifts it a little bit having a bit of a hundred percent a bit of light coming through yeah yeah it sucks my hair out the thing when i've, <laughs> I've not got a cap on so. right right yeah cool well is there anything else you want to talk to me about the car I mean, what other details? I mean, these are fantastic. Have you put these on yourself as yeah, well? Yeah, yeah. So, Grilled I mean, that was literally like the first thing I did really was like make it look like a race car. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, those I already had sat around, put the straps on, straps shortened the straps slightly. Because um, so they they're normally really, really long, like some kind of dog collar for a horse or something. Mm. So, cut them down to make them a little bit um, neater. Yeah, um, but the idea behind the vehicle is that it is a driver. Hmm. You know, it, it has to be driven, it has to be used. Otherwise, I tend to move my vehicles on. I don't hmm. tend to keep something if I'm not using it or not enjoying it. If it's not fit for purpose, then someone else can enjoy it. Yeah. Um, There's no point if yeah. they're gathering dust, really. But this thing definitely isn't perfect. Like the accident damage on the front <laughs> was enough to make me not want it. But and yeah, if it puts a smile on your face, it. then it's perfect enough. Yeah, That's all that matters, exactly. really. Yeah. I don't have to worry about it. I can take it to a car park. Everyone thinks it's a Beetle anyway, or they think it's a replica. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> and Fair play. Now I'd like to put some grills on the front of mine. I'd um, suit it. The only thing is, is I wondered whether I, I kind of wanted to put the the grills as opposed to the mesh. The only thing I I think is that with the grills you have to take out the front glass. Yeah, some of them you do. Yeah, which is a bit frustrating. So I'm tr I'm trying to find a find a solution at some point or another to. Uh, I think there's a company that for that used to make them for VWs that you don't have to do that with. Ah. But I can send that over if they still do them. Yeah, definitely send me a link. I have a feeling I know the ones you mean. Yeah. But I think they're a bit, to use the wrong word, a bit chubbier than the, the kind of thinner ones. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are bit, it is those ones. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Might be some bit of fabrication work to do to get that working where yeah. I want it to. So um, t tell me about this. We've got. That looks, that's an aerial. <laughs> yeah. And this one here? Also an aerial at some point in okay. time. Okay. Yeah. Nice. So what do you think <laughs> happened there? Uh, I guess one didn't work so well, so they replaced it with another one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now neither work. So <laughs> <laughs> that's the beauty of old cars. Brilliant. Yeah. Well, there's that old adage, which is like, oh, you don't need a stereo because the sound of the engine sounds so great. So 
To be honest, <laughs> I, I wouldn't want a stereo anyway, man. Exactly like what you said, the engine does yeah. sound great, but equally I like to know what's going on. Yeah. Like sight, smell, sound, I need all of it. So, Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. And so, um, tell, we were talking off camera about this horn. Tell me about, oh. tell me about the horn again. Uh, you can do the horn. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, okay, so basically Sai was saying to me that at some point or another, someone disconnected the horn, right, from the steering wheel. Yeah, so basically the horn was disconnected. Someone couldn't clearly get the horn push off. Me and right. Jack discovered that after seeing numerous attempts and damage and stuff when we changed the wheel over. So obviously when they couldn't get to it, they decided they would just install the new horn, uh, which is mounted on the bottom of the steering column. So whenever you move your knees or you bump something you get a nasty nasty shot god so. and there's nothing more embarrassing than that it's not it's not like what's called you know you're running down the street it's going to get attention because there's a beautiful car on top of it and then when you're getting out of it and you accidentally hit the horn we're not supposed to yeah and have a listen to this oh. yeah that's certainly going to piss people <laughs> off isn't it i mean yeah, an old lady that's crossing the street and you yeah, hit yeah. that by accident my neighbor <laughs> yeah jump I out there in skin when, uh, when we were just starting classics at the clubhouse, I went down to a site visit there. Yeah. And my 912, every time I turned the steering wheel more than 45 degrees left, the horn would beep. Yeah. So I was trying to drive into the golf club car park and there's people teeing off and it's like, dude, dude. And people are looking like <laughs> waving yeah. and trying to maneuver into a parking spot. And it's like, dude, dude, dude. And people are just like. Well, that's, definitely some, that's definitely a way to, to ruin someone's. Uh, Swing. Someone's handicap. <laughs> yeah. Good time. Good time. Okay, cool. Can we have a look at um, underneath the bonnet? Yeah, crack on. Let me. Uh... So you've got this really cool hub, um, hub straps. These really cool, um, what do you call it, bonnet straps? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which are kind of quite practical, to be honest, because the mechanism's so gone. Yeah. So just a, net, a little bit of added security, just in case. That's what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. God, there's yeah. some uh, patina in here. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. I, I don't even know how to explain this, but yeah. Very cool. Yeah, uh, it's good fun. Again, the wheel Simon donated to me, which was really kind. Um, the, nice. belt, the belt's just from H&M, does the job. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. And there's, uh, there's fuel in there. There is. So there you're is. ready to go at any, with any issues? You, you never know, man. You never know with old gauges and stuff. I've been around old cars long enough to not trust them, so. It's a fair point, to be fair. Yeah. And the worst thing is calling up the AA and they go, do you know what's wrong with the car? And you're like, it's run out of fuel. There's nothing more embarrassing. Yeah, exactly. yeah I've had that before. So. <laughs> okay, and um, this looks like a newish tank. Yeah, so the tank that was in it was replaced because it was just rusty and full of stuff on the inside and it was just easier and quicker and PRS had one in stock, so we just swapped it over immediately. Fair play. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Not so exciting, but... <laughs> so tell me, what's the, what's the 356 community like? So the, the 356 community is, is, is quite different um, in that there aren't really very many young people in 356s, if I'm yeah. completely honest. It's okay. definitely a, an older person's thing. I mean, I bought this when I was 30. Yeah. So I've wondered, like, from the age of the car to me, how many younger 356 owners there were in the UK at least, possibly none, but yeah. um, but the 356 community is really nice. They're slightly different to the 911 community, oh, yeah. I would say. Um, they're a little bit more old school. It's a little bit more like, um, I don't know, a 911 is such an aspirational car for so many, mm. whereas a 356 isn't so much for some people, which has mm -hmm. always kind of confused me really, because being from a VW background, usually you go for the oldest vehicle you can, you know, split window Beetle, split window bus, etc. So when it came to like Porsche, I was like, people kind of overlook the 356 to a degree because it's sort of an old man's car or mm. it's a Volkswagen with a fancy mm. badge. But right. I don't know, for me, I always thought it was aesthetically the most beautiful car. I mean, they are, they are stunning. I mean, the shape of them is, is absolutely it's gorgeous. An and I, I just absolutely adore the A's. I think they're just gorgeous things. Thank and they're, they're wonderful to drive. I, I often find that actually the, the, the older the, the Porsche products that I drive are, the more I fall in love with them, the more really? I enjoy them. Um, and uh, that, 60, that 63 over there um, is, I find it's a very, very modern drive. Really? Um, yeah, it's a very modern drive and it's not too far off a 911. And the reason is, is because what's called, it's got that, it's got that rear suspension um, that these later ones have and, and it just makes them drive wonderfully well. Okay. Um, having said that, 
that's what I remember because I haven't driven this car in a very long time. As you can see, it's covered in dust and it really needs to be recommissioned. Um, so one day maybe that will happen. But even things like my A over there, I, I also think that's a wonderful car to drive. It's stunning. Um, Looks and, insane. Uh, cheers, dude. And I'm sure your car is just as wonderful also. It, yeah. it drives better than it looks. <laughs> so. Well, I think it looks awesome. So if it drives awesome, I think you're winning on all fronts, thank, really. Thank yeah, you yeah. very much, man. Thank you. Dude, well, thank you so much for bringing it in. Um, it's a really cool piece of metal. And it's just, it's nice to spend some time with it because I've seen it knocking about, um, what's it called, at Megaphonics and other things. And, and I haven't had a chance to come over and really get, a, get up close and personal with it. So, um, cool. yeah, I really appreciate you taking the time to come I hope down. it's not too disappointing. No, it's been <laughs> wonderful. It's been wonderful. I really appreciate it. So thank thanks, Thank you dude. very much, man. I appreciate and, it. And, um, yeah, I'm sure we'll see each other again real soon. Wicked. Awesome. Thank you very much.